The opening of the 1983 season truly was a time to sing Hail to the Redskins. Just eight months earlier, Washington had defeated Miami in Super Bowl 17 for its first world championship in 40 years. And to get there, the Skins had knocked off the hated Dallas Cowboys in the NFC title game. A world title and a humbling of Dallas along the way. What could be sweeter? Well, how about a 1983 season opener against the Cowboys on Monday night? The Skins were the new tough guy on the block. And what better way to open their title defense than with the beating of their arch rivals on national television? But hold on a minute. The Cowboys were still the Cowboys, and their egos had been bruised after dropping their third consecutive NFC Championship game. Revenge had to be on Dallas's mind as it ventured into a sold-out RFK stadium to tackle Joe Theismann, John Riggins, the Hogs, and 55,000 Redskin fanatics. At Washington's RFK Stadium, both shirts and skins are acceptable in the stands, but on the field, it is skins all the way. This was especially true in week one of the 1983 season, when another sellout crowd greeted their Redskins as defending Super Bowl champions. The Skins' foe this night was the most intolerable of all to Washington fans, head coach Tom Landry and his dreaded Dallas Cowboys. The game would feature the two top-rated quarterbacks in the NFC from the previous season, the Redskins' Joe Theismann and the Cowboys' Danny White. White would try to pass the Cowboys to their 18th season opening victory in 19 years, but Dallas had taken on an uncharacteristic role in the NFC East as that of the chaser instead of the chasee. The Cowboys had to accept the fact that the champion Redskins were the new team to beat, as Washington head coach Joe Gibbs had become recognized as one of the game's great young minds. Whatever the names or the stakes, this still was the Redskins and the Cowboys, the NFL's marquee rivalry. In 1982, Danny White was director of the number two offense in the NFC. But in the Redskins, he was facing a defense which had allowed the fewest points in the NFL. And in a classic battle of strength versus strength, the early rounds would go to Washington. While the defense played like giant killers, the Redskin offense was turned over to the original Smurf, 5'7 receiver Alvin Garrett, number 89. Garrett, filling in for the injured Art Monk, responded with a game-high 10 catches, nine of which came in the first half alone. Garrett was Theismann's main target on the night, but hardly the only one, as the quarterback hit eight different receivers, including tight end Rick Walker, number 88. Heisman's shooting spree led to a 3 to nothing Redskin lead, and it was soon 10 to nothing when John Riggins performed his specialty from a yard out. Washington had completely bulldozed over Dallas in the first quarter, and things didn't change much in the second. The Cowboys were lobbying to knock off an incumbent champion. Around the same time in Washington, an incumbent president was beginning a campaign for re-election in 1984. And on this night, the Redskins looked like a party of Ronald Reagans heading toward a landslide victory over a badly outnumbered group of Walter Mondales. Dallas cut the lead to 10-3 with a Rafael Septien field goal, but it was all the points the Cowboys could muster in the first half. While Dallas's weapons were neutralized, Washington's were performing with lethal precision. First, there was Riggins, who rambled his way to a team-high 89 yards. Next, there was Theismann, who began an MVP season by throwing for nearly 300 yards and running for nearly 40 more. Then there was kicker Mark Mosley, who was on his way to scoring more points in a season than any kicker in history. Mosley's three first-half field goals built a 16-3 Redskin lead, one which the Washington defense wasn't about to relinquish. Redskins wrapped up Tony Dorsett and company for less than 100 yards of offense in the first half.
Danny White must have felt his hands tied and knots in his stomach as the Cowboys couldn't bear to watch their prime time unraveling. But the next time Dallas looked up, things were only getting worse. Charlie Brown's 41-yard touchdown catch added insult to an already painful Dallas first half. The Cowboys, down 23-3, were forced to ponder some difficult questions heading into halftime. Were the Redskins really this good? Was a new dynasty emerging in the NFC East? And were some aging Cowboys stars fading in the Washington night? If indeed it was magic Washington had displayed in the first half, the Redskins certainly hoped it carried over to the second. But Tom Landry wasn't a big believer in Hocus Pocus, and he took corrective measures to shake his spellbound cowboys from their hypnotic fog. Tony Hill's 75-yard score cut the Washington lead to 23-10. And while it quieted the RFK faithful, it also seemed to silence the Redskin attack. The 1983 Redskins possessed an offense of epic proportion. But in the second half against the Cowboys, these Washington heroes suddenly were living a nightmarish odyssey. skin offense found itself falling back to earth the Dallas attack was just taking flight and it was once again the wings of the fleet Tony Hill which helped the Cowboys soar Hill's 51 yard hookup from white was his second catch of a scoring bomb in the third quarter and trimmed a once overwhelming redskin lead to just 23 to 17. Hill would go on to lead Dallas in receiving yardage for the sixth straight season. And another look at his touchdown shows that Redskin quarterback Anthony Washington, number 24, had Hill in perfect coverage. The White's pass was just a bit more perfect. Hill's catches dropped like a bomb on Washington as the Redskins suddenly were fighting to stay afloat. Washington's biggest strength definitely was its high-powered offense, one which would go on to produce an NFL record 541 points in 1983. But from the looks of things, Dallas wasn't interested in records, just revenge. the Washington point scoring machine temporarily was derailed, the Cowboys went to work racking up their own impressive numbers with the help of a dependable friend, running back Tony Dorsett. Dorsett was part of a Dallas attack which would score 479 points in 1983, the third highest mark in NFL history. The seventh year back scooted for 151 yards against the Redskins, over half of which came on this 77-yard run, his longest of the season. While Dorsett took care of the marathon sprinting, it was a short jog by Danny White that finally put Dallas ahead in the fourth quarter. White's one-yard bootleg gave the Cowboys a 24-23 lead and forced Joe Theismann to play catch-up for the first time in the game. Ron 
Bellows' 33-yard interception return put the ball inside the Redskin 10 and was a harsh glimpse of reality for the Washington faithful. It was a glimpse that maybe, just maybe, the Dallas Cowboys weren't ready to relinquish their dominance in the NFC East. The Cowboys were used to having opponents band together in order to knock them down a peg or two. But this time it was Dallas which had pulled together to conquer a mightier fold. Bellows' interception set up the game clincher with White going to Doug Cosby for his third touchdown pass of the half. The Cowboys' four unanswered scores gave them a 31-23 lead and left Joe Theismann with little more to shoot for than a consolation touchdown drive. Theismann moved Washington into position for a last gasp score, but a touchdown toss to Don Warren only padded the scoreboard for the shell-shocked Redskins. This game definitely belonged to Dallas, and Danny White could be proud to walk away not only with a game ball, but with an amazing 31-30 comeback victory. Dallas would go on to lose in the NFC wildcard game, while Washington advanced to its second straight Super Bowl. But on this night, America's team could treasure the moment. It had shown all of America what it was made of.